Hey, hello, I'm Dola or CEO and co-founder of Sira. Welcome to the seventh Sira Summit. Yes, it's virtual again, but it's COVID these days. One day we'll get to meet again. Now, uh, we will talk about how Sira powers the next tech cycle. Uh, this next tech cycle happens now. We do not need Zuckerberg to turn on the switch. Basically, COVID changed our lives and I guess you, like me, sleep in the office. I mean, the home office. And the habits change too. It's like uh, you watch, you stop watching TV and instead you use streaming like Disney Plus. Uh, you monitor every step of the way you make with Strava. You write uh, either immediately on Twitter or you write your thoughts on Medium. So things change dramatically. Um, and let's see how these changes affect the database and your uh, stack. Uh, by the way, almost all of them, uh, all of these companies use Scylla today. So how databases change and what is about to change again? Before we speak about databases, let's speak about the underlying infrastructure. The underlying in infrastructure has been improving a lot. We have amazing NVMe drives. We have 100 gigabit uh, Ethernet switches. We have huge cores with uh, Intel and AMT and ARM all in competition and, and you get to enjoy it. Big machines and 5G with the chip. So big changes in the infrastructure and database, databases get to enjoy all of it. And we have all of these variety of uh, NoSQL uh, flavors, even distributed SQL these days. And the main recent changes in the, the, in the recent years is the consumption of databases in the form of as a service. Now, probably your stack look something like this where it needs scale, it needs to work all the time, it needs to be agile and responsive, uh, and it, it needs to run analytics. The thing is, uh, your requirements today are not necessarily will be the requirements of tomorrow with the next tech, tech cycle. And we, have, we are undergoing a real cycle right now. Uh, people buy NFT, people join the metaverse or do some type of a small metaverse steps towards the future. And there's, of course, cryptocurrency also. All of them need databases. By the way, all of these also use Scylla today. Um, but your database needs will going to change when you're going to use 10x the amount of data. Um, when you're going to use strategies like many of the uh, existing customers that we're going to present at the summit. Uh, I'm speaking about com telco companies like Amdocs or companies like... Uh, cyber like uh, Palo Alto Networks and, and many, many others, all of them don't just use the data as is. You do data enrichment, data cleaning, AI and ML and streaming and replication and caching from multiple sources. So the more you have data, the more you use that data and there's more opportunity to get more advantages with this data in this new world of ours. Now, uh, what's the effects on the database? If you have 10x the queries or 100x the queries, uh, when this happens, P99 becomes P36. Uh, you take the 0 0.99, uh, raise it to the power of 100, and it becomes uh, 0 0.36. Uh, more than one third of uh, the accesses get the P99 pattern in latency. Uh, things break at scale, uh, cost skyrockets. So you need to think and take all of these in consideration when you make a database decision. Uh, and to make it simpler for you, there is a couple of efficiency scores we define. So first, the, there's the basic one of uh, practical efficiency. You have your query to CPU ratio or the size of the workload to the RAM. Uh, of course, you don't need to have a RAM at the side of the workload. It's irrational. It's like old school in memory days. And there is the cost of the storage, which sometimes can be dramatic. 
Beyond that, there is the over-provisioning score. What's the portion of the idle time of your resources the database consumes? Usually, it's a lot. Uh, also, how many, what's the ratio of tables to clusters? If it's a one-to-one, -one, you're not util utilizing your infrastructure. And you most of the time, you do that because you cannot separate and you cannot isolate one table from the others. So maybe there is a database that can actually do it. The same with uh, data centers that run in read-only mode and instead of active-active. There is the database scale score. Can your database scale to 10x with the same cost and, and performance properties? Can it have still a good P99 if it will scale? What the time it takes to scale? What's the uh, ease of use in order to get to that scale? There's the maintenance score. There's the backup and repair and up upgradability and ob observability and traceability. All of these are a little bit boring, but uh, probably if you watch, uh, that's your daily job. So these are important to you and important to us. We synthesize with these uh, advantages as we run databases ourselves, uh, maintaining Scylla Cloud. And lastly, there is the freedom score, the licensing, the environment, can you run on every environment, on every cloud? Are you locked into some particular environment or set of tools? So th this is the freedom score. All of these are extremely important and we try to get a good score with Scylla. Now let's see what's the state of the union that Scylla got to. Over the years, there were several generations of Scylla. The first one was brute force performance. We wanted to get to the best utilization, the best efficiency, and we're still doing it. We're still excited about it. Uh, here in the uh, capture, you see a screenshot from top where we run a one petabyte uh, deployment with 20 servers and we do million, billions of transactions. Uh, we're about to have such a session at the summit and you can see there are 96 processors of one node doing 100% CPU utilization. Uh, the second generation was about reaching API compatibility with our latency uh, database Cassandra. Uh, with light, lightweight transactions, with compaction, we solved the compaction challenge. Later on, it was about extra, doing the extra mile, doing more things with Scylla, implementing changed data capture in a really nice way, uh, supporting Kubernetes, supporting indexes, whether they're local, whether they're global, adding compaction strategies more than the regular ones in the form of uh, incremental compaction, and the implementation of Alternator, our DynamoDB compatible API. Now we enter generation four. Uh, it's more than just Scylla 5.0, which is tremendous, but it, it will going to uh, be along uh, Scylla 5.x releases. And Scylla Cloud and Scylla Operator for Kubernetes will get a lot of benefits due to Scylla 5. Scylla 5 has these two major building blocks. The first is just set of improvements across the board. Uh, we, finally, we enabled repair-based node operations uh, by default. And if you do not know what it is, we have a session about it. Um, so repair basically is a really solved question. Uh, also, operations can be restartable. Uh, we have a new scheduler that brings better efficiency, better control, better latency, which is fabulous. We also solve large partitions. Forget about figuring out if you have a latency bump due to a large partition. There is no problem with large partition. And there are many, many other problems that we solve and handle. The major second improvement of Scylla 5 is the Raft consensus protocol. Uh, we implemented Raft, it's done. Um, the, the, all of the, the protocol is committed. We also enabled um, um, transactional schema agreements using Raft. So we have a, an extremely solid base uh, for Scylla with Raft. And what's coming is 
additional topology changes, transactional, and tablets, which will allow us to make Scylla much more elastic, uh, allow us to have immediate consistency instead of eventual consistency for your data. I'm not talking about maintenance alone and better indexing. There are more changes which we're going to cover some of them throughout the summit. Scylla 5 will be an amazing enabler for Scylla Cloud and Scylla Kubernetes because elasticity will become extremely better. And portion, one portion of the elasticity aspect is ability to scale your workload out and back in, but more, more aspects are about to split shards which are overloaded into other shards dynamically because everything becomes transactional and everything becomes controllable and we'll be able to do that uh, with, uh, multiple, without waiting for a timeout but immediately because it's linear, uh, consist consistent and transactional and uh, through that you'll be able to manage gigantic clusters at ease and so sometime today it's not as is and things will be much either in, in the future you're going to be able to use mega nodes or tiny pods and to do further cluster consolidation and table consolidation within a cluster so lots of things are coming with Scylla 5 which is happens now uh, the release is at uh, RC mode as we speak uh, transitioning to uh, Scylla Cloud and, and really these days uh, the, the, I think that the entire ecosystem moves to as a service because you, you like to move away the uh, maintenance burden of uh, complexity of a distributed database which is still even with Scylla 5 will still have a, a good amount of learning curve into a service based consumption while you are able to concentrate on your application itself. So Scylla Cloud today runs on AWS and GCP with several flavors, and it allows you to have extreme efficiency. Uh, it's 5x and even more cost-effective than other solutions. Uh, it gives you perfect security and also perfect isolation, I mean performance isolation in, in that case. And it's relatively simple to understand whether the units we talk about, servers, or the observability and the analysis of, uh, of, of your data. What's coming is multi-tenancy. Uh, we mainly get a lot of requests to separate compute and storage because sometimes your workloads are not perfectly even with their demand on compute and storage. So we're going to separate those. Uh, we're also going to provide serverless approach with uh, a, a pay for what you tend to use in terms of transactions. It's more of uh, elastic and modern usage beyond servers. Uh, we're going to maintain the previous uh, form, so don't worry, all of the goodware of Scylla will going to remain. We're going to add APIs and with all of this multi-tenancy, since we will be over committing the existing infrastructure, you'll get better efficiency eventually. So all of this is coming in, in 2022 this year. So uh, stay tuned. And of course we have the summit itself. So make sure you attend the, the, the sessions you'd like from customers, from users, from uh, engineers. Uh, stay tuned, make sure you star us on GitHub Welcome to uh, interact with me or with the entire team. And uh, thanks for listening. Uh, enjoy the show. Bye-bye.